our next two artists were here already this morning. They're going to come back and, and show their finished looks. Um, and take you through the, one of the last Gold Boil sets. So all the way from the US, we have the pleasure to welcome Kylie Bussing and Jacob Kahn to the stage. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, guys. What an amazing day full of so much inspiration. I got to poke my head over at some of the competitors' works, and it just really okay, brings so me back. It's amazing. I am Kylie Bussing. I'm Jacob Kahn. And today, our inspiration is salon reality, real life in salon hair. And that can mean different things to many different people. For me, as I was saying earlier, that means pastels, vivids, brights. It means pushing the boundaries, you know, helping my clients to kind of rebel in a more luxe and sophisticated way. And for me, that means dry cutting, undone hair, working with natural texture, and creating effortless real life looks for my clients. And that's what we're gonna show you today. We're gonna give you a few examples of hair that we would actually do in the salon. So, uh, let's bring out our models. Here they come. <laughs> so this is my beautiful model peony, like the flower. She's a beautiful little flower. So today we'll be creating a glow effect in her hair. You can see that there is a deeper contour underneath, and then there's going to be a brighter, lighter veil on top. I'm gonna be working with a few different mediums. I'm gonna be working with Illumin Play as well as Colorance. I feel like hair is a fabric, and so when you can add different textures, use different mediums, you're gonna create different finishes and nuances within the hair. And I have to be honest, this was definitely a, a pre-lightening project. Jacob and I were in the trenches with Peony here. Um, and, and that's because that's real life. You know, Peony has a natural level three, very coarse texture. And I'm very happy with where we got her. Yes, um, her root. But it definitely was a project. And so I like to share that. You know, even Jacob and I deal with that in salon all the time. And I have to shout out our amazing assistant, Wendy, who, um, took on this project, she killed it. So yeah, her, I'm gonna... Her level three roots were about like that when she came in yesterday. So it was a long day of lightning for them. For me, I'm like, you wanna go brown? <laughs> Do that. Exactly, <laughs> so I'm gonna get started tapping in my base and I'm going to be adding panels of monochromatic, you know, shades of pink, but again, different tones, different finishes, switching it up using Illumin Play and Colorant so that I can create reflection in the hair. Sometimes striation and a highlight or mul you know, multiple different shades within the hair is not what a client is looking for, but they want something to enhance their color. So a lot of the time you can turn to more so reflection. And so by creating kind of a monochromatic pink look, I'm adding in a bit of fun, but I'm keeping it sophisticated. And I know that I'm biased because I have pink hair, but pink is the gateway color. It's like the best color to begin with if you want to start dabbling in, you know, pastels or vivids. Thank you. Oops, forgot the cape. <laughs> <laughs> this is very expensive wardrobe. <laughs> so I'm going to continue applying this, and then um, we'll come back. All right, so I'm gonna get started with my cut, and this is Maisie. She already had really pretty cool layer going on right now, but there are some things that I think I wanna change about it. I love this kind of fringy feeling, but it feels a little heavy. It maybe pushes in a little too much, a little more than I would want. And then we've got all of this weight right behind it right here that I think we can break up and have flow a little bit better. I'm gonna be working on her dry, and I'm gonna do that with a five and a half inch scissor. I love to use a small scissor for work like this because I feel like I can be a lot more detailed and I can control things a lot easier. And I love to work on dry hair. Probably at least 50% of the cutting I do in the salon is on dry hair. And a big reason for that is a lot of time I want to be able to cut first and then color to the shape of my haircut. And this is a great way to do that. So we're going to start off in the fringe here. And the first thing we're going to do is just separate out a little baby section in the center, like a little tiny triangle. And then we can just clip this back using her ear. I don't really like to use a lot of clips while I'm working. I feel like it kind of clutters up my workspace a little bit and I'm just trying to keep it 
like pretty minimalistic as I go. So we're going to just tuck this back and start off with this center triangle. And this is going to be our design line, like our guide for the rest of this haircut. I like to start in my shortest point, and then we're going to work out to longer lengths from there. And we're going to turn her to the side. And in our first section, she already has one kind of little short piece. She was like, I don't know where this came from. And I'm like, well, it's fine. I like it. We're going to use it as the starting point for the rest of this. And you can see it's right there. And then this is our guide right through here. And what I'm going to do is slide just past that guide so it falls out. I'm going to come underneath. And with a little short to long cut, we're going to carve this up in a very soft way. It's going to mimic a razor cut because it's creating a short to long, short to long kind of movement. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm over-directing everything to the center here, so we'll already start to get a little bit of that um, push out towards the corner. So pushing to the center, I got to slide past my guide so it starts to fall out. As soon as it falls out, I know I'm in the right place. And then I'm going to carve this up. Starting at the bottom, working my way up right now, so I'm kind of building a little bit of weight in the center, but in a soft way. So this will kind of curve to the shape of her forehead nicely. I think that's a great start. We're already looking good there. Another reason I like to cut dry is because I'm able to kind of style and shape things as I go. And my clients can see that happening right away rather than having to wait for me to blow dry it later on. And let's say someone has never had like bangs before. They've got a one length or they got long hair and they add in fringe. And then you, you know, cut those fringe, they wait an hour, and then they see it. And you know that's going to be a lot of stress, possibly, in their minds while they're waiting to see that end result. And working dry like this, I can cut that fringe in right away. She would be able to see it as I was working and know that she likes it right away or know that we need to change things right away. So rather than waiting until the end of the service, it's just a really great way to instill that confidence in your client right away from the beginning. And I can start to mold that in. And you see, just a few sections, we're getting this like, really beautiful face frame. Let's widen this up a teeny bit more. Notice I didn't take out a triangle to start. You know, we kind of get stuck in this cookie cutter mode of like, oh, we're doing fringe or we're doing bangs. We're going to take a triangle out that we take our comb and we wiggle it on the head and we see where it goes and then we just do whatever we were going to do anyway. But really, I like to do things section by section because I might think that's enough. Maybe I don't need to do more or maybe I want to widen things up a little bit more. And eventually we'll get to the corner and have that triangle section anyway, but I didn't have to commit to it straight from the beginning. So we're still over-directing all the way to the center. This is a stationary guide right now. You know, we have, a stationary, we have stationary guides, we have traveling guides. And if we're using a stationary guide, it just means that we're pulling everything all the way to the same place. I'm waiting for that guide to fall out because just like a razor, I'm working outside of my fingers right now, working underneath. And I'm going short to long, short to long, short to long creating these little soft C-shaped cuts in the hair so that no matter what, I'm always going to get a really soft finish. And with that over direction, we can see right away that by combing this out, we get a little increased length to the side. And I love that. I often call it instant gratification haircutting because I don't have to go back and do too much to see the end result. We're just seeing that happen in real time. So I'll do the same thing on the other side, maybe two sections here. And it's just kind of pivoting out from the center with vertical sections, push all the way to my original section here. And then you just have to wait for the guide to fall out. So right there, the guide falls away. I know I'm in the right place. And then we're going to carve up through to the top. And we don't have to cut a lot because she had some of this fringe already, but it was almost um, sort of accidental or something. So we're just making it seem a little bit more on purpose. So here's our next one. Push all the way to the center. Let the guide fall away. Come underneath your fingers and cut short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long, just like that, working up to the corner. And then with each cut, you want to throw it into the air, and then you have to <laughs> style it and look at it. Don't wait until the end of the you know, panel to take a look and see what you've done. Every single cut that I do, I'm moving the hair around, I'm styling it and seeing if I'm getting the results that I was going for. All right, and you can see you. With just a couple little sections, we've widened her fringe and given her this perfect little soft kind of curtainy fringe that everyone is asking for right now. And she already had a little bit, but she could have had none. Do exactly the same sections, exactly the same pattern, and you'll be able to get that end result. What do you guys think? Do you like that technique? So easy. We often overthink the bangs. 
We don't have to do too much to get the results that we want. So I'm just going to continue connecting some of these layers in, literally doing exactly the same thing, overdirecting everything all the way to the center, connecting in that same shape until I'm happy with the amount of layers that I get. Beautiful. So kind of like Jake said how he does a lot of cutting on dry hair, I do a lot of coloring on damp hair, um, especially where I'm going in and I'm going to be kind of merging these shades together. This top veil is a rectangle section or a mohawk section. And so we're going to be taking kind of chevron sections, like a chevron pattern in the top. My base was a mixture of Illumin Play, Metallic Berry, Pink, Pastel Rose, and Pastel Lavender. Because I want that really bubble cummy kind of icy pink. And here I am using Pastel Coral, Pastel Rose, and a drop of pink. And so I'm just merging those together. And I'm taking rather large sections because like I said, I just want to create reflection in the hair. This top veil, when it lays over this darker contour underneath, is going to give it a really great kind of glowy look. And I think that, you know, we talk contouring all the time. When I'm putting my makeup on, I'm contouring. But we do it a lot when we're doing hair. We're working with highs and lows, shadows and depth. And so here I'm strategically placing my depth in a solid fashion underneath so that on top this reflection can really shine through. So you can see, again, larger sections, almost just like a multi-dimensional gloss. So I'm going to continue adding in my pastel pieces. All right. And while she's doing that, I'm just finishing up this front section. And I often refer to this front section as like, my ponytail layers, like layers that will fall out of a ponytail. If you watch my first haircut today, we did something curly. We used a similar approach on curly hair that we can use on um, like smoother or straighter textures as well. And one of the things that's really important to me in the salon that I do for every single client is I check what their hair looks like when their hair is up as well as their hair is down. So let's finish these sections on this side. And all we're doing is working with a kind of narrow vertical section that takes out that front hairline, bring everything to the top, and then cutting short to long from the front to the back. You could use a razor to do this in the same way. You could even cut this blunt and go back and soften it if you want. That's totally fine. There's no like one way to do a haircut. We always say there's no um, absolutes in cutting. Like I don't, you can, hell, you can chew it off. I don't care. <laughs> as long as it, we can use fire. I've seen people using fire. <laughs> I don't think that sounds like or a an good axe. idea. Or an axe, maybe a samurai sword or something. <laughs> but um, as long as the end result is what you want, I think that's great. You know, there's so many different ways to get to these end results. And we're just taking out that first section that's about an inch back. And then look, now we've been able to give her this soft, cool shape that can fall out of a ponytail. And depending on how much she wants to fall out, she can pull from higher up and get less that will fall out of the ponytail that way. Or if she wants more, she can pull further back and have more of that soft ponytail fall out. And it's really up to her, but it gives her a lot of options. But when you bring it down, it's still not very mullety. We've still kept that front corner in a really nice way. And it just opens the face up with just a few simple changes. We can make some big, big differences. Um, and for her, a lot of that layer is already there, but the weight distribution isn't there. It's a little bit bulky. It's a little bit heavy. Her hair is actually pretty wavy too. We've blown it out to look like this. So what I'm going to do now is go through and soften the weight and distribute the weight in a different way with a 14 tooth uh, texturizing scissor. So a lot of people are afraid of a scissor like this because there's some big old teeth on it. There's a lot of negative space on that scissor. But the reality of that is that everywhere there's negative space is where this is leaving weight. You're only cutting where there's teeth at the top right there. And for this scissor, it's angled to the side a little bit. So it's at a 45 even on the tooth, so it takes even a little bit less. Maybe 15, 20% of the weight will be removed with this. And you know, this is another tool that a lot of clients are jaded by a texturizing scissor. They are like, no, no, you can't use a texturizing scissor on me. It doesn't work, you know. But that's because maybe they've had someone use it in a very aggressive way. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it and we're going to close it at the scalp a million times. No, we're not. We're just going to, <laughs> we're going to do the opposite. So what we're going to do is I'm going to elevate this back area and I'm looking for where things look weighty. Like right here, it looks heavy. Right there, it looks heavy. Right here, it doesn't look so heavy, right? You can see that? And we're going to take the scissor and switch it to be more vertical. 
we're going to match the movement of the hair. Using only the first half of the scissor, we're going to close a few times on the way up. We're going to skip that skinny area. We're going to close a few times on the way up. And then we're going to leave that top panel full so that we don't get any weird short pieces that sit out on the very top. Because I think that's a complaint that I get a lot from clients when they're first coming into our salon is that somebody used a texturizing scissor and they got a lot of flyaways. They got a lot of straight lines. And you know, if you use a texturizing scissor horizontally like this, it's going to take out weight. Like if you go in here like this, yes, there is less weight in the hair. But you've also created another blunt line in the hair right there. And the whole point for me is to create seamless and effortless movement in the hair. So what we're going to do is just work vertically through these sections to soften and reduce that weight. So we're coming in like this. Don't come too close to the scalp because the growth patterns are gonna be too strong. We're gonna be up here, couple little closes and throw that away. A little chomp, 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 flick. This looks light, we'll leave that out. Maybe this looks a little too light and then this looks kind of heavy. We'll cut through that, but we'll leave that top section solid. So um, as we go through the back, you might find that your client has too much hair from the occipital down. Right? But I can't do that exact same technique from the occipital down because it's going to over direct so much and I'm not going to be able to accurately see the weight. Like imagine if I was holding this hair and I pull it all straight up. It all collapses down. It gets skinny. It collapses into itself right there. So I can't see the weight distribution. So what I'm really looking for underneath here is to pull this out vertically from where it lives. So occipital up, we're holding this out, occipital down. We're holding it out like this. She has a good amount of weight from here down. You might not see that. A client might have all of their density at the top, less at the bottom, so you don't need to do this. But if they are very thick down here, you can pull that out. You can go palm to palm, match the movement of the hair with your texturizing scissor, couple little closes on the way out, and then let that hair go. Next one, couple little closes on the way out, let that go, couple little closes and let that go. Notice that I put a little tension behind my scissor if I need to, to make sure I'm not pulling anything at the scalp as well. And this is going to give you a really kind of light and airy and fluffy kind of finish, which I think is really cool. You know, stuff that I noticed that's very popular right now is like 70s shapes with grungy 90s finishes. Mm -hmm. Like undone, I didn't style it, but it still looks better than everybody in the room kind of styling somehow. And then with 70s movement, just without the, the locked in 70s hairspray and everything, which I think is really cool. And a great way to give that kind of airy, undone softness is to go in and remove a little bit of weight, create a little negative space in the hair to give that hair some room to breathe. So I'm just going to continue working through these layered areas with my texturizing scissor until I'm happy with the weight. Perfect. So you can see these, even as this is processing, it looks super cute. And I had stated earlier that I'm a big proponent for, you know, adding interest into our services wherever we can to kind of help to elevate us. And so if you can focus on, you know, giving your client that experience and having, you know, the processing be visually pleasing because we know it's all, it's, it's pretty rough sitting in the salon chair staring at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> if you can elevate that service, that just helps to elevate you as a stylist. And so now I'm going in with my Colorons formula. I am using 10 BB. I did 18 mils of 10 BB with two mils of 6 VV and a drop of cool pink pure pigments. And so I love to use colorants for a lot of my pastels because it's quick, it's easy. And this is also, again, it's going to add to the different nuances, the different like multifaceted tones that I'm trying to achieve within Peony's hair. So in the end, this is all going to be pink, yes, but it's going to have reflection. It's like when our hair is in the light, whether you're a brunette, whether you're a blonde or a redhead, you see those underlying pigments come out in the light. So that's kind of the finish that we're creating by adding in different shades. And speaking of reflection, you did Maisie's color too, didn't you? I did, yes. And it's the same kind of technique where we're taking larger panels and we're choosing tones that live within the same family but we're just tweaking them by maybe a level or a shade to give reflection. And that's such a great technique also for a brunette that doesn't want that striation from a balayage or a highlight. Just focus on changing up tones and adding in reflection. 
What did you use for her formulas? So for Maisie at her base, I did 3% lotion with 6kg, 7kg, and 7g. I feel like the key to a really bright copper is making sure that you balance it out with gold. Uh, and I also utilized the orange and the yellow pure pigments. And then on the ends, we did some painting and I alternated with Illumin Play yellow and clear, as well as Illumin Play pastel coral with a few drops of orange because we wanted to create this kind of soft apricot and a marigold shade that kind of live together. And I feel like coppers really genuinely love that because it just adds a lot of reflection into their color. Absolutely. And I think that yellow is such an underused vivid. It's one of my favorite vivids to see in people's hair, but people like really stray away from it because we're constantly neutralizing yellow. So it feels wild to put it in someone's hair, but it can be so flattering. I love it so much. Absolutely. I think it, I think it, you know, it gets a bad rap, but I think that it is very underrated and it, it suits Maisie's base so well. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm um, finishing up with this weight distribution and just softening out the shape. I'm really loving what we're seeing. And you can see, like, it's not always about, and this sounds a little redundant, it's not always about what we take off, but it's true. She came in with a really cool haircut that I just wanted to tweak a little bit. And by removing that weight, we can see this really cool movement that it creates. By taking a little bit of weight from the center and pushing it out wider to the sides, it opens up her face a lot. And now I just want to accent it with some styling, right? One thing that I think I'm always trying to show my clients is how to style your curtain bangs a little easier. Because, you know, if someone doesn't have bangs and you take out a brush, a blow dryer, a curling iron, and three different products to style it, they're going to say, this is like my least favorite thing to hear a client say. Oh, I'm never going to be able to make it look like this at home. I hope I'll be able to do this. That's like nails in a chalkboard to me. So I always want to instill in them that it's going to be very easy. So as often as possible, I'm trying to style with only my fingers. So let's say that we wanted to get a little bit more flip in her fringe. We can place our hands right on the back of this section. And then we're just going to blow dry up and around my fingers like that. And I'm pulling that into the center, letting it heat up. And then right away, I'm getting a little bit better flip on that side. On this side, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use the back of my hand. Oop. Sometimes if it's hard to pick it up, you can actually pinch it and let it blow dry around your fingers like that. It's just about creating heat and tension. That's it. And I always think if I'm not burning my fingers, I'm not burning them, you know? So that's just a really easy, cool way to accent that curtain fringe and something that's easy to show your clients that they'll be able to do as well. And then one other thing that has kind of been my, my secret weapon lately for giving my clients a cool kind of like airy undone finish is to take a texture spray, like mineral spray from Creative Texture. Here, look down a little for me, like hang your hair forward. And then I'm just going to use this on dry hair. It's almost like a sea salt spray, you know? It gives a little bit of that gritty kind of feeling. And then I'm going to take a diffuser. And on high heat, but a low airflow, I'm going to diffuse this in and kind of massage it in with my fingers as I go. And that's just going to make the texture feel a little more natural. And we've been calling it like, it makes it feel a little more real. Like it's less like you did it with a brush, less like you did it with an iron, and just something that her hair might do. And just get the last little bit of that excess moisture out of there. And you can look straight ahead. And we get this really cool, flowy, shaggy feeling that looks like it just happened, you know? That effortless, cool girl hair, like that's really what I'm looking to create. Yeah, love. I feel like, like you said, Finger styling is so underrated and even, you know, hand Absolutely. hair painting, hand painting, things like that. It's it's very underrated. You don't need 900 brushes. Yes. You can just create it with your hands. I don't even know where my brushes are. <laughs> so this is how the final product will look while it's processing. You can see those little ribbons. You see the different tones, but they're all living within that pink, peach, lavender kind of family. So. And those subtle differences make such a big impact. I think that's Absolutely. so cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, just adding that reflection that kind of just kicks up rather than just a solid pink, but again, monochromatic, just adds that interest and elevates the color story. And you showed another really cool processing shot earlier, and you've got her end result backstage right now, right? Yes. Yeah, why Aaron, why don't out? you come on out? So we're going to reveal Aaron from our, yeah. first, from our first presentation today that I had colored. So I'm not sure how many of you were here, but we did this kind of gradient glow inspired by the northern lights. You can see she has 
this sky blue, a pastel mint, and a pastel lavender. And we left those little tufts in the back and around the ears because, again, we're wanting to add rebellion and kind of interest to the shape, you know, give it a little bit more of an edge. If we took those away, it would just be a very sophisticated crop. And so sometimes, you know, knowing when to say when and leave those little details can really help to elevate a shape. So, yes. And here's my end result. Undone, shaggy look. That yellow aluminum play just makes it stand out so beautifully. And I had one other model from this morning's presentation that I'll bring out if you didn't get to see her earlier. Valencia, I'll bring you out as well. More gorgeous warm tones, more dry cutting. We used very similar scissor movements to create this look. We diffused her hair, cut it while it was curly, and then I just shook it out. We didn't do anything else to it. There's no iron work here. There's nothing more than a simple bit of um, soft waver from Curls and Waves and a diffuser, and that's it. Yes. Are you going? Or Valencia? <laughs> so again, you know, real life in salon hair, I'm sure that you, you, know, you can match a client to any one of these females. And it's, you know, can give you inspiration for when you're in salon. And yeah, I hope that you guys can take these techniques and use them in the salon right away. Thank you so much for watching us. Thanks to Goldwell for bringing us out here. It's been so cool to be doing hair in Amsterdam. Yeah, we don't want to go home. <laughs> We're moving here. Yeah. We'll see you guys at the gala tonight. <laughs> Thank you, <Bye>. guys. <laughs>